the Dakota. An imposing Gothic structure towering over 72nd Street and Central Park West. A place many believe is where the devil stays when he's in New York. Designed by Henry J. Hardenberg and constructed between October 25, 1880 and October 27, 1884. Named the Dakota because at the time of its construction, the area was so sparsely inhabited and remote, it resembled the Dakota Territory. From the more populated sections of Manhattan, it almost seemed more of an outpost than a high-class apartment house. This, of course, would be long before it became the satanic setting of Roman Polanski's film, Rosemary's Baby, and where the murder of John Lennon would take place in December of 1980. The Dakota proved from its earliest beginnings that something was definitely wrong with the place. During construction, painters would often see a young girl playing in the hallway. Reportedly, one of the workers went to chase her off, as this was no place for a child to play. He followed her to a room that turned out to be nothing more than an empty closet. Shortly afterwards, that painter fell off the scaffolding into his death. During the 1930s, numerous reports of poltergeist activity took place in the basement. John Painter, the building's electrician, was once attacked by a figure in the basement wearing an odd mask with a winged collar. At first, Painter thought it was just a kid playing a prank because the figure was so short. But upon hearing the deep guttural noises and rancid smell of sulfur, Painter cried out to God. This immediately caused the figure to jerk the mask off, shake it at him, and then vanish. Painter had reportedly remarked he was convinced it was the devil himself who attacked him. Many have said the top floor had once belonged to an unnamed resident who walked the floor every night, never stopping until the dawn. To which one resident who lived below often said, it was like listening to the hooves of the devil pacing back and forth every night from midnight until dawn. However, the height of the mystery comes after Ira Levin's best-selling novel, Rosemary's Baby, is turned into a film. The building in the movie is called The Bramford, which is Levin's tribute to author Bram Stoker, but it was actually based on the Dakota. For those of you who do not know the story of Rosemary's Baby, it is about a young couple who are just starting out in life. The husband is an actor and desires fame and fortune. They meet an elderly couple who live across the hall from them, befriend them, only later to learn through a series of disturbing events that they are part of a coven. And unbeknownst to Rosemary, her husband has offered up their first child in exchange for a life of wealth and celebrity. What's truly disturbing is that one year later, Roman Polanski would lose his wife, Sharon Tate, in a horrific home invasion from members of the Charles Manson cult known as The Family. The disturbing irony that Polanski suffered himself as the title character of his film Rosemary, but would go on to achieve extreme wealth and fame. Manson ironically would be forever tied to Sharon Tate, Roman Polanski, the Beatles, and John Lennon, who would often refer to himself as the devil. Tex Watson, Manson's number one man who led the home invasion, had said to the victims that he was the devil and there to do the devil's business. So where do the Beatles and John Lennon enter into all of this? Manson referred to his apocalypse as Helter Skelter and believed the Beatles were sending him secret messages via the public named White Album, telling him to prepare for the end of the world. In a bizarre triangle, John Lennon's music would be used as an excuse to commit murder on Sharon Tate, who was married to Polanski, who chose to film his satanic love letter, Rosemary's Baby, at the Dakota where John Lennon would live himself, and later, 
be murdered in the building's entrance. Is it all coincidental, circumstantial, or does the devil still reside at 72nd Street and Central Park West? <laughs>